Not long ago, I used to play gigs only using tube amps. I was hardcore a tube amp defender. I still am. I still have my favorite amps and they, those are tube amps. However, at some point I realized that to fully enjoy certain gigs, particularly if I wanted to play very often, I could use something a little different. And I'll explain a couple of the reasons why. Uh, the first one is that instead of having to park my van, my van in the middle of the street and have all that related stress to load in and load out, all I had to do is bring my backpack, my guitar and high five people on the way. The second reason is the weight. The third reason is that while tube amps are great sounding amps, in my opinion, that's the best sound you can possibly get. Um, there's, it's also true that they sound different every night and that when you put the microphone in a different angle slightly, you get a different tone, which can be a little stressful sometimes if you don't know the sound tech or if you want something really specific. I decided to buy myself, I'm talking three, four years ago, my first digital unit, fully digital unit which was the Axe FX. In fact, it was not the Axe FX itself, it was the floor unit called FX8. This was a great unit, but at some point I sold it to buy the Camper version. Why did I change? Why from using the Axe FX version, the fractal version, the AX8, did I go sell and buy the, the Camper unit? Well, there's a few factors that played there. The first one is that uh, Fractal decided to discontinue the AA, uh, the, their floor unit, which means no more support. That was somewhat of a deal breaker for me because no more actualizations. If something breaks, it just makes me a little nervous because that's a unit I need to heavily relay on. Second reason was the sounds that I needed were light rock, say, so not, not heavy distortion for metal or anything like that. It was more in the rock side of things, in the blues side of things, I needed a nice clean tone, something that sounded very, very re realistic and a lead tone. For context, I'm not one of those players who need a million sounds. I need three or four that sound really well that will do the, the job so I can concentrate on playing. That's my aim. That's what I like to use. So. Great, both units were a similar price, so I sold one and I bought the other one, both used. Uh, fast forward, uh, I think a few months back, six months ago, something like that, I started to see videos that Boss had released this pedal, the Boss uh, GT1000 and 1000 Core, which is supposed to be this great pedal, and yadi yadi yada. And you know what, I've heard that so many times that I'm very skeptical because every time that I see something like that on YouTube and I see a demo, particularly a paid demo, which by the way, this video is not, this is my honest, unbiased opinion, take it or leave it, but this is how I feel about it. I don't work for any of those guys. I don't have any sponsorship from them. This is just what I did and why I did it. But as I was saying, they tend to sound great on the demos. Uh, they, they have the demo, fairy dust, I suppose, but then you hook it up, you plug it in, you start playing and it's nothing like it. And um, I kept watching those videos and I was fascinated because I thought the unit sounded really nice. So uh, it, I thought it was too good to be true, to be honest. So I bought it and I thought, well, let's A, B one and the other one. If I really like it, I'll keep it and I'll sell, sell the camper. If you know, if as expected is not all the way there, uh, I'll just continue to use my camper because I also, one thing that's very important to me since I use it live and I get paid to play is that it needs to be very reliable. I cannot use something that's gonna fail or give me some kind of a glitch. I need something that night after night is gonna work. So with that mentality uh, in the back of my head, I bought it, I started playing with it, and here's some things that, that, um, that kind of made me smile when I, when I did so. 
First, you can use an interface to program the whole thing from your computer, which makes things so much easier. The interface itself, if you're used to uh, Camper and if you're used to Fractal, is very similar. They, they are all very similar. You drag and drop things here from, from here to there. It was, it was actually fairly easy to do. I, of course, did what I always do, which is first I tried to find the sound that I really liked from the library or from other users. And I have to say, to my astonishing surprise, some of the factory settings were so freaking good, I didn't even need to look further. So I found a few that I liked and I started playing them and I ran into another review. Uh, this was, I can't remember the name of, it, of this YouTube channel, but that, there was a guy who made reviews of all of them and compared things that were fairly technical that I'm usually not interested, interested on except for one that I really am interested on, which is latency. He measured the latency of the top 20, I guess, uh, units on the market. And to my surprise, one of the units that show less latency were, was the boss, both, both units. So that was, that was shocking. And when I started to play it, I know some may think that this is all in my head. It's possible. But I felt that it felt organic in a weird way. And I think that what I perceived as organic was the fact that there was very little latency. I have to say, in all fairness, that uh, after listening to both units together, I think the quality of the audio on the camper was slightly superior, in my humble opinion. However, Am I, like I try to be as practical and as pragmatic as possible. Am I gonna notice that difference when there's a drum set next to me and a bass player and somebody's singing and there's background noise? How, how much a difference is that gonna make? In fact, if I didn't have the units side to side and I couldn't hear the two right in the same time in the same room, I don't think I would have ever been able to make up my mind of which one sounds better. So with that in mind, I decided that what I was, what I was gonna be happiest with was the uh, GT. Now, there's two versions of the GT. You, there's a thousand reviews, so bear with me. But the, the only actual difference between the two versions they have, the GT1000 and the GT1000 core, is that the core is smaller, it doesn't have the, the I think, the expression pedal or, or some of the buttons it's got. It's, it's just a reduced casing, but it's the same brains. So to me that was like ding, 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 ding moment. Um, because I'm always looking for smaller, shrinking my pedal board, you know, less is more type thing. And this did the trick. So I decided to buy it. I, wa I didn't want to make this um, journey or compression type of video until I had played with it for a while and it's been about six months since I had it and I have to say I've never had a glitch I've never had a problem I played with it I beat the hell out of it I um, I tried I program things I move things around it's super customizable uh, and uh, I'm very, very satisfied with the results that I've got. Uh, one more factor, of course, that I didn't mention, but that also played a part was the price. The, uh, at the time of me switching between the two, the price was roughly a fourth of the campers. So I bought it, I, I, I bought the GT new, I sold the camper, and, uh, and I still, of course, I, 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 I could have bought at least two or three. So that was very pleasant to me. Um, and yeah, 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 it's just, it's just a great buy. So the sounds that I'm going to be showing during the demonstration, they all come from some tweaking that I did on the stock ones. So I hope you liked it. I hope you found this video informative. The only way that I have to know if I should make more videos like this is likes and comments. So if you liked it and you want to express that, please feel free to leave me a like. Um, 
you're all, all welcome and invited to subscribe to my channel. This is something casual that I do just to help other musicians who may have been in the same situation I was. But if you want to hear more from me and see whichever videos I release, please subscribe and hit the bell because otherwise YouTube will not tell you when I release a video. Uh, so here's some samples and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you. 